I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my everyday life living in Central America. Today, I'm going to be telling the story of going to Florida, being in Orlando, and having my daughter get a toe infection where we needed to visit the doctor there in Florida, comparing to what that's like getting foot care from a podiatrist here in Nicaragua. So stay tuned right after the bump. My family was recently on vacation in Orlando, Florida. We went to Disney World in Orlando. Uh, it, we went to Disney World and we went to Universal Studios. We had a really good time and it was really kind of a last hurrah for us because our kids are getting old enough that while they'd be willing to go to the parks again, it won't have that same magic. They're not going to be little kids the next time. They aren't really little kids now, but they're young enough to still kind of be into the magic of it all, especially my youngest, my eldest was kind of young enough when we were old enough when we went previously that she still remembers it a bit. So she got a little bit more experience out of it. Whereas my youngest got to go at just the perfect age. But the purpose of this video, my eldest daughter managed to get a really severe toe infection on her big toe on her foot uh, when we were there in, in Florida and we weren't able to spend all of our time in the parks walking around like we had hoped to because she had this infection. Now, luckily we had figured out that Disney is great about giving you wheelchairs and we were able to rent one during the days we were there. And most of the days we used that and it ended up being absolutely perfect and made things really easy in fact and they were fantastic about stuff because she was at a point where she could walk a few steps and she was stable but she actually couldn't walk around the park like that was not possible we couldn't do anything if we hadn't had a wheelchair so that was fantastic and a really good learning experience that something as simple as that was able to be solved in such an easy way so that was that was great thank you to disney for making that so possible and and so easy uh but the thing that i wanted to talk about is while we were there we decided we need to do something about it because this was a severe infection so we tried to go see a doctor. Now keep in mind, we are Americans and in theory we have health insurance. Everything should make our lives really easy. Well, the first problem that we ran into is that as is often the case in America, even if you're paying for health insurance, they may randomly cancel it on you. We're in one of those situations where due to a paperwork problem with the government, they were refusing to give us health care. So we literally were not eligible for health care in America. We were willing to pay for it. We were supposed to be by law eligible for free health care because that's how we qualify. And yet, even with all those things, they would not give it to us at all. There is a problem because we're Texans. You would file and it's a system where they make you file and then they say you're not eligible. Then you file again and then they say you are eligible. It's a crazy system and it leaves people who are in the uh, getting assistance for health care gap with a gap in coverage on a regular basis. And so if you get sick during that time, it doesn't matter what you do, you cannot have health insurance due to the Obamacare program. It actually forces in Texas, because of the combination of the way that Texas works and the way that the federal law works, you can actually be forced into a scenario where you have no accessibility of healthcare coverage. Not just it's expensive, not just you have to go pay for it, it doesn't exist for you and you must simply take your chances for part of the year. This is something that people talking about American healthcare rarely talk about. But as someone who has lived in the United States for most of his life, had to deal with American healthcare all of his life and been in Texas for many years, I can tell you it is a regular recurring problem that even with my wife putting in tons of time on it, checking into the laws, filing constantly, they have these electronic systems that simply deny you without explanation and without any way to work around them. And the only system you can do is constantly reapply and hope that the system starts working. As long as it doesn't work, they use that as a means of simply not providing health care to some percentage of the population. So when people are talking about health care in America and they talk about how well, as long as you have health care insurance, you know, it still is problematic, but you know, you, there's processes to make it work. But health care insurance is not a guaranteed right and there's no protections to make sure you have accessibility to it. So we were in a situation where we were in a gap in coverage that was not our fault. We had filed. We had done everything we were supposed to do. We were legally obligated to maintain coverage, yet it was not offered to us, right? This is a bizarre scenario where you're legally mandated that you have to have it and you are not eligible for it. So this is something we've been running into year after year after year and is one of the things driving us out of the United States. This is one of those why the United States is 
off limits to us as a consideration for long-term living because we cannot constantly, and it was constant, that we would go through these gaps in coverage when living in the United States. Sure, it would only be a few weeks or maybe a month or two per year, but if you think about one to two months per year, that's 10% of your life is lived without health care coverage. And of course, anything that happened in the previous coverage, they use that gap to say that it was a precondition, pre-existing condition, so you don't get covered on the new insurance. If it happened during the gap, you never get coverage. You're completely out of pocket. So there's all these different scenarios where they use this, this illegal system to revoke your insurance and then use that revocation to not provide you the insurance when you do get it restored in the future. The system is well engineered to make sure that there's no reason you would ever expect to have coverage. Okay, moving past that. So we finally got to go to a clinic. So the first thing was how difficult it was to find and get to a clinic. When we finally did get to a clinic, you know, we had to provide our own uh, transportation and everything. We had to get an Uber and that cost us like $30. We got to a clinic. We waited for a while. When we finally got to talk to someone, they explained that the charge was $500 with insurance to see a doctor and find out what would be needed to be done. That did not include any tests. That did not include any care. That did not include any transportation, $500 was the fee for getting to use the clinic, and then all other costs were on top of that. And of course, it's the United States, so there's no guarantee that they won't charge us for more things later that they don't disclose. They always have the right in the United States to charge you simply, once they have your information, they can charge you years later for things that you never did. And there's very little you can do about it because they basically are protected as arms of the government and the government can never be sued. It's essentially how it works. It's not quite that way, but they are protected. They're not treated like a free business in a free market where it's illegal to try to steal from someone. They're actually protected and allowed to steal from you. Yes, they can get in trouble, but not like a real business, right? So it's you are very, very exposed when you're doing business with a healthcare provider. So $500 was what it was gonna cost just to talk to a doctor. We already knew what was needed, amoxicillin. That's all she needed was $10 of medicine, and that was the best treatment they could do going forward. It's an infected toe. There's no need for an expensive doctor appointment. That is completely a farce. Anything like that is an absolute an intentional attempt to block healthcare. We could have gotten her healthcare in any other country in minutes. Whether they wanted to see a doctor for free or not, that's whatever. The important thing is we knew exactly what was wrong, we knew exactly what needed to be done, and we were blocked from doing it. We couldn't get the medicine we needed, and we couldn't realistically see a doctor. And we didn't know if that could, would end up costing thousands of dollars, and we could never know ahead of time, right? You don't have the right in America to know ahead of time what healthcare is gonna cost. They can tell you, and we've many times been told, this is the full price, you've paid the full price, everything's done, and then years later found out, nope, we decided to charge you double, right? We've been charged $500 years later for something we didn't even do. And they just hit, hit. And then when you don't pay, they immediately hit your credit, right? So this is a system that they have. So you have no protections. They can say anything they want while you're there. You have no protections. So $500 plus this risk, plus who knows how much it's actually going to cost. Plus we'd have to go get the medicine and they can't dispense it. All this just keeps adding up. And we're like all for an infected toe. You know what? It is better to just wait and go back to Nicaragua. In Nicaragua, the same thing, getting to a podiatrist, not a, you know, a clinic with just a doctor who's just there to sign their name and get their, their government mandated paycheck. This is someone who's actually a medical professional who's there to take care of you. Here will cost $16 at the last appointment we went to. It may have gone up a couple dollars, but $16. We have a podiatrist that we trust here that's very nice and good. Uh, and then getting the medicine here, yeah, it's not much cheaper than the US. Um, uh, amoxicillin and similar drugs in the United States are reasonably cheap, but they are cheaper here. However, here we don't have to go see a doctor for that if we don't want to. If you want that extra care of a doctor looking and trying to figure out what's wrong, a doctor double checking all the stuff, a doctor checking the prescriptions or whatever, yes, you can do that. $16 is about what you would pay to see a podiatrist, f about $20 to see an ER doctor, and about $10 to $12 to go see a doctor at the emergency clinic, but not the ER. That's the, the, the critical care or urgent care clinic like Amoxa here in Leon that would be a little bit over $10, but definitely not $16. Uh, and you would see in the ER, you'd see someone within two to three minutes. Uh, with the podiatrist, you'd see someone in a day. It's so like it would be within several hours under normal circumstances. And if you're going to the urgent care and paying the cheapest price, then you expect to wait maybe as much as 30 to 40 minutes and you'd see someone for that $10 to $12. 
In all those cases, here the doctor's not necessary. If you know what's wrong, if you have any medical knowledge, if you have a friend who's a doctor, which we do, we have loads, we can just ask them and they can say, yep, here's the thing you should take, start with that, uh, and then we can just go to the pharmacy. So here we could have the medicine and have her getting treated in about 10 minutes. If we were at home or anywhere in the city, found out this is happening anywhere in any city, we could have medicine for her in about 10 to 15 minutes, all for just a few dollars, It'd be less than $10. In the United States, it took us hours. We spent $30 or more, plus all that time just to get to a doctor to find out it was $500 to find out what it would, what it would cost. And then we would have to take an Uber somewhere, spend a whole bunch of money again, get the medicine ourselves, that would take hours instead of minutes and then eventually uh, get her treated. That was our experience in Florida. It was so dramatic that even for, and this is the important part, it would be cheaper if I got an infected foot in Florida to book a flight on American, on Spirit, on Avianca, fly from Miami, which is near where we were, to Nicaragua, even pay the unnecessary fee to see the podiatrist, get diagnosed, go to the pharmacy, get the medicine, and go right back, get on a plane and fly back to Florida. That would have been a little bit over half the cost of just the initial consult with an urgent care doctor in Florida. And honestly, they take so long to see you, it wouldn't have been that much different in time either. That's a little bit tongue in cheek, but you get the point, it's a ridiculous scenario. So this is a real world example of a real minor thing that actually caused problems for us and demonstrated that in the real world, going to Nicaragua was not just what made sense, it was the only logical thing to do. And of course, we trust the doctors in Nicaragua for far more. They're not just there to make money, they're not there doing some government mandated job to siphon off your funds. They're not participating in a healthcare insurance scam. None of that is happening here. So it is a completely different experience and you can trust that the reason that people want to become doctors here is because they want to take care of you. That is something that is so different. Not that it never happens in America, but the chances that you're going to encounter a doctor that that's why they're in that field rather than to make money is, is it's so different. And so this was a great example of real world. We got on a plane and we came back to Nicaragua to deal with healthcare. Now, in this case, we didn't do an extra flight because of it, but we chose to wait and do healthcare in Florida, uh, to do healthcare away from Florida in Nicaragua because it was the sensible way to get healthcare as Americans who had been paying for health insurance, who were signed up for health insurance, who they refused the health insurance for. That is an unfortunate scenario that would not have changed things. The fees and the, the promise, because it was out of, out of network anyway. So it was not actually a major factor, but it, it highlights how scary it is that there's nothing you can do in America to be uh, sure that you're going to have health coverage. You always live at the risk that at any moment it could go away with nothing you control. No amount of money, it ultimately protects you. And that, that Nicaragua was able to do easily what America couldn't do with great effort. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. Questions, comments, get down below. As always, if you'd like to support the channel and the work that we do here, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And as always, I will see all of you tomorrow.